In this lesson, we want to talk about solving trigonometric equations using square roots, squaring, and identities. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with 4 times sine squared beta minus 1 equals 0. So just like we've been doing before, we're going to add 1 to both sides of the equation. We're going to have 4 times sine squared beta is equal to 1, okay? So what I want to do now, remember, you're always trying to isolate your trigonometric expression. So I want sine of beta by itself. So what I'm going to do here is just divide both sides by 4, okay? And so that's going to give me the sine squared beta is equal to 1 fourth, okay? Let me scroll down just a little bit and get some room. So now, because this guy is squared, I want to take the square root of each side. Remember how this works. If I take the square root of the left, on the right, I want to go plus or minus, right, to account for the positive or the negative. So I'm going to say that the sine of beta is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 fourth, okay? If you simplify this, you'll say the sine of beta is equal to, you'll go plus or minus, the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2, so you can basically say this is 1 half, okay? So let me actually erase all of this, and let's come up to the top and just paste this back in here. So we know this gives us two scenarios, right? So I want to split this up and say the sine of beta is equal to 1 half, or the sine of beta is equal to the negative of 1 half. So let me erase this now, okay? So we have our two guys there. So basically what I'd want to do is go to my unit circle. I know at this point a lot of you already have it memorized, but some don't. So let's go down and let's look for where the sine of beta is equal to a half, and then also where the sine of beta is equal to negative one half. So basically you're looking for your y coordinate to be a half or negative one half. So that's going to happen here, okay? That's also gonna happen as we go around, it's gonna happen here. As we go around, it's gonna happen here. And then as we go around, it's also gonna happen here, okay? So notice everywhere where I circled has a 30 degree reference angle, right? So basically it's going to be, if you wanna put this in terms of radians or degrees, we'll just do both. So 30 degrees, then you have 150 degrees, you also have your 210 degrees, and then you have your 330 degrees. Okay, so that's in terms of degrees. And then in terms of radians, you would have your pi over 6, okay? You would have your 5 pi over 6. You would have your 7 pi over 6. And then lastly, you would have your 11 pi, okay, over 6. So these would be your solutions if you said between 0 and 360 degrees, or also if you said between 0 and 2 pi in terms of radians. So let's just cut this away. I'm just going to cut this, come back up here, and paste this in, okay? So these are going to be, again, our solutions. Let me just erase this nonsense here. These are going to be our solutions for, basically, if you restricted this over an interval, again, you have from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. That's this guy right here. And then this guy right here would be from 0 to 2 pi, okay? So sometimes they ask you this question to solve over a specific interval. And then other times they'll say, hey, what's the general solution? So if we want the general solution, let's just put this right here really quickly. Remember, when you work with sine, the period is going to be 360 degrees. But what you notice here is that as you jump here from 30 degrees to 210 degrees, you're increasing by 180 degrees, okay? So I would start this by saying I have 30 degrees plus 180 degrees times some integer n, and then you'd have 150 degrees, so 150 degrees plus this 180 degrees, okay, times n, because again, if you look at 150 degrees and 330 degrees, those are different by 180 degrees, okay? And what's causing this, if we go back to the unit circle, if I circle this one again, you'll notice that these guys are across from each other. This is 180 degrees, right? So basically, these are across from each other and these are across from each other, okay? So you can basically say that you start with 30 degrees and you add 180 degrees to get your next solution. Then you add to 180 degrees again to get to the next solution, so on and so forth. If you start with 150 degrees, you add 180 degrees to get to your next solution, then 180 degrees again, so on and so forth, okay? If you wanted to put this again in terms of radians, we're going to use the same concept. Here I'm going to go pi over 6, so basically your 30 degrees. Then plus 180 degrees in terms of radians is going to be pi, okay? So you're just going to do pi times n. And then for 150 degrees, this is going to be 5 pi over 6, so 5 pi over 6. And then I'm just going to go plus my pi times n. 
okay? So here's all the solutions that you could possibly want. You have your degrees across that interval from 0 degrees to 360 degrees, and then you have your radians across that interval from 0 to 2 pi, and then you have your general solutions, so they're just basically if they didn't ask you to solve over an interval, this is how you'd want to list this for degrees and then for radians. All right, let's take a look at another example. So here's one where we're going to need to use some identities. So we have the negative of cosine squared beta minus 2 times sine of beta is equal to negative 2. So notice that you have sine here and then also cosine here, and cosine specifically is squared, okay? So what you're meant to think about, if we go back to our worksheet or our little handout on the identities, if you go to the Pythagorean identities, remember cosine squared theta is the same as 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay, so you want to look for possibilities there where you can substitute things in. So remember the negative here. This is a big deal. If you have a negative there, you're putting a negative. Put this in parentheses, what I'm going to do, because the negative's got to get distributed to everything. So I'm going to go 1 minus my sine squared beta. Okay, again, that's in parentheses. Then minus your 2 times your sine of beta is equal to negative 2. Okay, distribute the negative to everything. So I'll say negative 1 and then plus sine squared beta then minus 2 times sine of beta is equal to negative 2. Okay, so from here, we already know what to do. We want to end up with sine of beta equals some number, and then we want to solve, right? So I'm going to tell you in advance this is factorable. If you have something that is quadratic in form, if it's not factorable, you can use the quadratic form. Okay, but here we're going to be able to factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2 to both sides of the equation, and I'm just going to rearrange things. I want the squared term all the way to the left. So I'm just going to say that I have sine squared beta, and then this is gone. I'm going to put 0 here. Okay, over here, I'm going to put minus 2 times the sine of beta, and then if I have negative 1 plus 2, that's positive 1. Okay, so this equals zero. And the idea here is that I can factor the left side. Okay, so I can factor this. Again, if it's a roadblock for you when you're trying to factor these guys, go ahead and take something like u, okay, and say sine of beta equals u. And then it's just like if you were trying to factor u squared minus 2u plus 1. Okay, if that was equal to zero, you could solve that in a breeze, right? It's just a roadblock because we're now dealing with trigonometry. So how could we factor this guy right here? And again, if it's if it's troubling you, just look at this one. Well, first off, if I had sine squared beta, and there's nothing out here, there's basically a 1, well, I'm going to have the sine of beta times the sine of beta. Okay, so that's my first term in each case. Now, for this part right here, again, you're just looking at the negative 2 and the positive 1. Okay, so I need two numbers that are going to multiply together to give me positive 1, but sum to negative 2. Well, that's going to be negative 1 and negative 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. And basically, we could write this, okay, as the sine of beta minus 1 quantity squared. Okay, so this equals 0. And the reason I write it like this is you can write it like this or this. Remember, this is basically from special factoring. When you think about this, it's really only going to be one of these guys that we have to set equal to 0, right? Because you have a duplicate solution. So basically, all I want to do here is just, again, take one of these and say sine of beta minus 1 is equal to 0. I'm going to go ahead and add 1 to both sides and just say the sine of beta is equal to 1. Okay, now this is going to be really easy to solve for us. Where does the sine of beta equal 1? Well, if we're looking for the sine of beta equals 1, well, again, where's the y-coordinate 1? Well, right here, right? So at 90 degrees or pi over 2 in terms of radians. And that's basically the only place there. So your, your general solution would just be you rotating around another 360 degrees before you get there, okay? So let me go back up. So let's just put our solution here. So again, if we're in the interval, if they give you degrees, you want to answer in degrees. So if they say over the interval, you have zero degrees and then to 360 degrees. Again, if you get this, then your answer should be in degrees and you'd want to put 90 degrees here. OK, if you got an answer or if you got a test question where let's say it was with radians. So let's say they said zero to two pi like this. OK, then now you want to give your answer in radians. So you could say beta is equal to pi over 2, or you could do the solution set notation. Just ask your teacher what they want. Okay, so I'm just going to do this, so pi over 2. Okay, so that's my solution basically in these intervals. Now, again, a general solution is where we keep thinking about when we just keep rotating around and around and around. So basically your general solution, if it's in terms of degrees, will it be 90 degrees plus another full rotation is 360 degrees times some integer n. Okay, and then for the radians, you just use this pi over 2. 
And then plus, again, one full rotation in terms of radians is 2 pi. So you would do 2 pi and then times some integer n. Okay, so this is your general solution here. Sometimes they ask for that. And then these are your solutions if you have a specified interval. Sometimes they ask for that. Okay, so let's look at a very, I would say challenging, but a very tedious type of problem now. This one involves squaring, and you'll recall from basic algebra, if you square both sides of an equation, you lose information. And so you have to basically check your solutions in the original equation, right? You sometimes get these extraneous solutions, and so they're not going to work as solutions to the original equation, okay? So we're going to see that here, and we're going to see that it just takes a long time to go through everything. So we have the negative of cosine theta is equal to the square root of 3 times the sine of theta, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is square both sides, okay? Because I want to get rid of this radical, and also I have cosine and sine, so I'm thinking Pythagorean identity, okay? So I'm going to square both sides. So let me write this as the negative of cosine of theta, okay? This is going to be squared. This equals the square root of 3 times the sine of theta. This is going to be squared, okay? So the negative is going to go away. Negative squared is just going to be a positive, right? Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Then cosine of theta squared, we could just say this is cosine squared theta like this. Over here, the square root of 3 being squared is 3. Sine of theta being squared is just sine squared theta, okay? So at this point, we know that cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta, okay? So let's just go ahead and make that substitution. I'll say this is 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to 3 times sine squared theta, okay? So let's scroll down and get some room going. All right, I'm just going to subtract 3 times sine squared theta from both sides of the equation, and this is going to cancel, and I'm just going to put 0 here. So I'm going to have 1 minus, remember, you can treat this as a negative 1. So negative 1 minus 3, or negative 1 plus negative 3, however you want to think about this, this is going to be minus 4. Okay, so basically negative 4 times sine squared theta is equal to 0. Okay, so how are we going to solve this? I want you to think back again to basic algebra. Okay, this is where your skills really come into play. Let's say it's something like a squared minus b squared. How would you factor this? Remember, this is the difference of squares. So it's a plus b, okay, that quantity, times a minus b, that quantity. Well, here you have the difference of squares, right? I could write this out and say that this is 1 squared minus, you could do 2 times the sine of theta, okay, quantity squared like this, and this equals 0. Okay, so now it's apparent or it's very clear that this is the difference of squares. Sometimes you have to rewrite things like that. So this would be 1 plus 2 times the sine of theta times 1 minus 2 times the sine of theta. Okay, and we'll set this equal to 0. So basically I'm going to take each one of these guys and set it equal to 0. So I would have 1 plus 2 times the sine of theta is equal to 0. Or you'd have 1 minus 2 times the sine of theta is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and solve. They're very easy to solve. I subtract away 1 from each side over here and over here and over here. And this is going to cancel and this is going to cancel. Okay. So over here I have 2 times the sine of theta is equal to negative 1. Over here I have, let me put the or, I have negative 2 times the sine of theta is equal to negative 1. Okay. So basically at this point I'm just going to divide this by 2, okay, and this by 2, and then this by 2, or this is negative 2 over here, and this by negative 2. Okay, so this cancels, and I have sine of theta is equal to the negative 1 half, then or over here, this is going to cancel, right, and you have negative divided by negative, so that's positive, so you get the sine of theta is equal to 1 half, right? So you can condense this down and say basically you have plus or minus 1 half. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And let's just copy this real quick. Let's go to a fresh sheet. So we have a lot of room to work because the problem here is you're going to get all these solutions, okay? So if the sine of theta is a half or it's negative a half, remember, we already went through this. So let me write this again. So sine of theta is a half or sine of theta is negative a half. Basically, you would have a 30-degree reference angle in each case, right? So you would have here. And then basically you go around, you'd have here, and then you go around and you would have right here, and then you go around and you would have right here, okay? So we already know this because we saw a problem with this earlier, but basically 30 degrees, 150 degrees, 210 degrees, and 330 degrees, okay? So let me write this down. So we have our 30 degrees, we have our 150 degrees, we have our 210 degrees, and then we have our 330 degrees, okay? And I'll write it in radians when we finish up, so let me just keep this in degrees for now. Let me cut this away, and let me just paste this in right here, okay? Let me get rid of all this nonsense. Now, when we square both sides of an equation, the solutions here that we get are proposed solutions. So we have to get our original equation going so we can check it. So negative cosine of theta, okay, 
is equal to the square root of 3 times the sine of theta. Okay, so we're just going to use degrees. You can use radians, it doesn't matter. You're going to plug in for theta, okay? So basically, if I plugged in 30 degrees here and 30 degrees here, what would we get? Well, again, I can go back and forth between the unit circle, but a lot of you already know that the sine of 30 degrees is a half, okay? So this is going to be one half. So this would give me the square root of three over two. So let's just write that as the square root of three over two. Okay, over here, I'd have the negative of cosine of 30 degrees. Well, the cosine of 30 degrees, you know is a positive number, right? Because 30 degrees is in quadrant one, all of these guys are going to be positive in quadrant one, right? So there's no way this can be true because this is the negative of a positive number, okay? So you can go ahead and mark this out. The actual answer here is square root of three over two, right? But it's the negative of that. So what's the negative of the square root of three over two is equal to the square root of three over two. So that's false, right? So that solution does not work. Okay, for the next one, let me erase this and set this back up. So we had the cosine or the negative of the cosine of theta is equal to, we had the square root of three, times the sine of theta. So we know that the sine of, if I put in 150 degrees here, we know the sine of 150 degrees is basically a half, right? Because the sine of 30 degrees is a half, the sine of 150 degrees, because sine is positive in quadrant two, 150 degrees has a 30 degree reference angle. So this is a half as well, right? So this is basically gonna be the square root of three over two, okay? Over here, if you think about the cosine of 150 degrees, remember cosine is negative in quadrant two. Okay, so this will save you a little bit of work. You'd have the negative of a negative, which is positive. So you know this is probably gonna work, right? So the cosine of 150 degrees, we know that this guy is going to be the negative of the square root of three over two, okay? But you have the negative of the negative. So be really careful. So the negative of the negative of the square root of three over two. So if I apply the negative, I basically would have the square root of three over two is equal to the square root of three over two, okay? So this one checks out. So 150 degrees is a valid solution. Then for 210 degrees, let's go ahead and set this back up. And I probably shouldn't erase this each time, but it's the negative of the cosine of theta is equal to the square root of three times the sine of theta. So 210 degrees, if you put this in here, okay? And you put this in here, again, we know that the reference angle is 30 degrees, right? So what is the sine of 30 degrees? Well, it's going to be one half, but we're in quadrant three now, so we know this is negative. So basically this is negative one half. So this would be the square root of three times negative one half. So square root of three over two, and this is negative, okay? So over here, 210, again, this many degrees, I know that I have a reference angle of 30 degrees. So the cosine of 30 degrees is square root of three over two. And because this guy is in quadrant three, cosine is negative. So this is the negative of the square root of three over two, so this isn't going to work out, right? Because again, if I apply the negative, this becomes positive. So again, we have one that doesn't work. So this one doesn't work. And then for 330 degrees, let me just do this one last one. So the negative of cosine of, let's just go ahead and say 330 degrees, is equal to, you have the square root of three times your sine of 330 degrees. Again, I've got a 30 degree reference angle and I'm in quadrant four. So I know this is negative one half, right? So you might as well just put negative square root of three over two, okay, like this, and I'll just put this out here. Okay, so over here, again, I have a 30 degree reference angle, but cosine is positive, okay, in quadrant four. So I would say square root of three over two, so square root of three over two, but it's the negative of that because I've got this negative hanging out. So these guys are equal. So this one does work out, okay? So your two valid solutions here are 150 degrees or 330 degrees, okay? In terms of degrees, and then if you're working with radians, it's five pi over six or then 11 pi over six. So let's go ahead and write our solution here. We'll say from the interval, if you're in this interval zero degrees and then 360 degrees, we'll say the solution set is basically 150 degrees, okay? And then 330 degrees only, okay? So just those two guys. And then if I'm in this interval from zero to two pi, okay, if they give it to you like this, always answer based on what they give you as the interval, okay? If they don't give you anything, then you can just ask your teacher like, hey, what do you want this in? So basically at this point, I wanna do my radians. So I'll go ahead and say that this is five pi over six and then 11 pi over six. Let me close that down. And then again, if you want a general solution, you want to realize here that you could just add 180 degrees each time. Again, I know the period for sine is 360 degrees, but you have to pay attention to this type of stuff if you're writing a general solution. So the general solution here would be, let's go ahead and say 150 degrees plus 180 degrees times n. 
Okay, so you don't want to do 360 degrees there because, again, if I add 180 degrees, I get to 330 degrees. And if I add 180 degrees to that, I'm going to be at 150 degrees plus 360 degrees, which is 510 degrees, you know, so on and so forth. Okay, and then in terms of radians, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's 5 pi over 6 plus 180 degrees is going to be pi radians and then times that. Okay, so these are your general solutions, and then these are your solutions if you're given a specific interval to solve over. Just get with your teacher in terms of what you need to do.